Hello again YouTube, it's Skylar. Welcome back to my face. And in today's video, I'm going to be explaining what dysphoria is. And the reason that I'm making this video today is because I often feel that despite the fact that more and more people are becoming aware of transgender people, there is still a lack of education on gender dysphoria and why that makes someone transgender in the first place. So I'm just going to be explaining a little bit more about what that experience is like to have gender dysphoria. Now, if you're watching this video and you are a cisgender person, which means that you were born in the body that you are the gender, um, you haven't experienced gender dysphoria. Now, the best way that I can explain gender dysphoria in a broad term is extreme depression and anxiety. And it has to do with self-image, self-perception, and the way that you perceive yourself related to things that are gender specific. So for example, most of my dysphoria did not occur until I had started going through male-based puberty because only after I started experiencing higher and higher levels of testosterone at a younger age did I begin to notice the changes that a person goes through when they go through puberty. And those changes were specifically male-related. So you consider things like gaining more muscle mass, your voice gets deeper, um, you grow body and facial hair. All of those things are male related. They're very gender specific traits. Those specific traits are have what given me so much anxiety and depression all of my life. And that's because I'm a woman and the best way that I can explain how a cisgender person might experience gender dysphoria is for a moment, imagine yourself, for example, if you're a cisgender woman, imagine waking up one day and having a complete full beard and chest hair and body hair and a deep voice. You probably would feel extremely upset. Well, that's what it would feel like to be transgender because I'm a woman that experienced male just being a man and that's very traumatic for someone that's actually a, a girl, a woman. So think for a moment what that might feel like even if only even if only for a split second you looked in the mirror and you had masculine features a full-on beard chest hair muscles your hair was falling out on your head that would probably trouble you a little bit as a cisgender person this is why transgender people exist because they're just normal people that happen to be born in the incorrect gender, the incorrect body, the incorrect hormones were there. So imagine that extreme anxiety of seeing yourself in the mirror as someone that you're not, and now stretch that over your entire life. And you will begin to understand why people medically transition because that's not who they are and the reason why I'm bringing this up too is because people keep referring to being transgender as a mental illness and I've said many many times that this is not correct Gender dysphoria itself is a medical condition. 
not a mental illness. And that's because it doesn't affect you mentally. The dysphoria does. The treatment for a transgender person is to transition. So it kind of upsets me when I hear criticism from people of saying, you're mentally ill, you need, you need to see therapy, you need to see a doctor. I do. I, I see many therapists. I see many doctors. This is the solution is to transition from male to female. That is the cure for gender dysphoria is to transition. And people still haven't seemed to wrap their mind around that idea because for some reason they think, oh, well, you're mentally ill, so, so go see a doctor. I do. That's why I transitioned in the first place because that's the treatment. That's what makes me feel normal. That's what makes me feel happy. And I don't know, maybe some people will never understand, but to those out there who may be struggling to try to figure out how gender dysphoria affects a transgender person's life is just to imagine yourself just overnight magically whatever developing characteristics of the opposite sex. And you will immediately, it'll click in your mind that imagining that scenario would trigger enormous amounts of anxiety because you would automatically know that something's not correct. So you would, if you were in that situation, you would probably try to fix whatever went wrong as soon as possible. With trans people, it's no different. Trying to correct the things that weren't supposed to be there. I wasn't fortunate enough to be born a woman. There's very rare circumstances which haven't yet fully been understood by science as to why they occur. But to my understanding from the current basis of knowledge that we do have is that my brain, my neurological system, is female. And something either went wrong when, during pregnancy or something happened. And instead of the rest of my body developing the way that my brain starts, because your brain starts to develop before anything else develops. So I started to develop as a woman, and then the rest of my body became a man. So obviously there's, there's that disconnect. 99.999% of the time, people will, it'll be the same. People will be born with the body and the neurological system of the gender the, the, the same they match. But for small minority of people like myself, their gender is incongruent with the reality of how the brain perceives it. So the only way to correct that is to correct the imbalance, correct the mistake, basically. So maybe that was a word salad today. But until tomorrow's video, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to my videos for more amazing content. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye.